NASA is on track to conduct its first mission of the new Artemis Lunar Exploration Program sometime in spring of 2022. However, it appears that the historic first flight of SLS will have to wait a little longer. And why is this? Well, let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. NASA is postponing the rollout of the first SLS for a final pre-launch test by a month to give workers more time to complete vehicle preparations. To be honest, I'm not surprised at all. Sometimes even I think that delay is the definition of SLS. Just kidding. NASA announced on February 2nd that it was delaying the rollout of the SLS from the Vehicle Assembly Building to launch Complex 39B for a fueling test and practice countdown called a wet dress rehearsal. Officials said as recently as mid-January that they expected the vehicle to roll out to the pad in mid-February for that test. Instead, Tom Whitmire, Deputy Associate Administrator for Exploration Systems Development at NASA headquarters said that rollout will likely take place in mid-March. He said in a call with reporters it was too soon to give a more specific date for that rollout given the work still ahead for crews. Unlike in December, when a faulty engine controller or computer that controls one of the SLS's RS-25 engines delayed a rollout, then scheduled for the first half of January, there is no single issue causing this latest delay. As Whitmire said, they just have a lot of things they need to close out with this big vehicle. And Mike Bolger, manager of NASA's Exploration Ground Systems program, also added that there really isn't a significant thing that we're working on, it's just the volume of work and it's us being really meticulous and making sure that when we roll, we're ready. Another factor has been the pandemic, including the recent surge in cases linked to the Omicron variant. As Bolger said, it has slowed them down some. However, he also added that the situation appeared to be improving as the number of new cases dropped. That delay rules out a launch of the uncrewed Artemis 1 mission in March as agency officials had previously been hoping for. Instead, NASA is looking at two week windows from April 8th to the 23rd and from approximately May 7th to the 21st as launch opportunities for Artemis 1. The windows are governed by the performance of the SLS and mission constraints such as having the Orion spacecraft splash down in daylight conditions. That schedule will depend on the vehicle's performance during the wet dress rehearsal. According to Bolger, it should take about two weeks to complete the full series of tests on the pad from checks of vehicle interfaces on the pad through the full tanking test and practice countdown. That time frame is just approximate though, because according to Mike Serafin, Artemis 1 mission manager, there are some first uncertainties, but then some standard uncertainties. The first time uncertainties involve activities not done before, such as rolling the full SLS out to the pad and linking it to the pad infrastructure. And standard uncertainties involve issues like weather that could delay the rollout and testing. As in the past, agency officials said they don't plan to set a launch date for Artemis 1 until after the wet dress rehearsal is complete. Like Whitmire said, we really don't know until we do the wet dress rehearsal how much additional time it will take to get ready for launch. Just hope it won't be a significant amount of time. Luckily, the delays in the launch should not pose an issue for the SLS's two five-segment solid rocket boosters. When NASA started stacking the boosters a year ago, agency officials said the boosters were certified for 12 months, but that testing could extend that limit. Here's hoping that they can proceed further into this year. We have waited too long for this $20 billion rocket. But in any case, every gray cloud has a silver lining, so let's come up with some positive news today, and I'm sure you'll like it. NASA recently revealed that the agency has selected Lockheed Martin to build the first rocket designed to launch from Mars. This small rocket will transport samples collected by the Perseverance rover into orbit around Mars. The agency said on February 7th it awarded a contract valued up to $194 million to Lockheed to develop the Mars Ascent Vehicle, or MAV, an essential element of the overall Mars sample return campaign being developed by NASA and the European Space Agency. The MAV will be transported to Mars on a NASA-led sample retriever lander, which will also carry an ESA-developed rover. That rover will pick up samples of Martian rock and regolith cached by Perseverance and return them to the lander. Perseverance may also return some samples to the lander on its own. 
Those samples will be loaded into a container on the MAV, which will then lift off and place the container into orbit around Mars. An ESA-led Earth return orbiter will grab the container using a NASA-provided system and return it to Earth. The contract covers design, development, testing, and evaluation of the overall MAV and its ground support equipment. Neither NASA nor Lockheed released additional technical details about the design, but NASA awarded a contract to Northrop Grumman in March of 2021, valued at up to $84.5 million to provide first and second stage solid fuel motors for the MAV. Committing to the Mars Ascent vehicle represents an early and concrete step to hammer out the details of this ambitious project, not just to land on Mars, but to take off from it. Thomas Zerbuchen, NASA Associate Administrator for Science, said in a statement about the MAV award. We are nearing the end of the conceptual phase for this Mars sample return mission, and the pieces are coming together to bring home the first samples from another planet. NASA officials provided a few updates about the status of that conceptual phase of development at a meeting on February 2nd of the Mars Exploration Program Analysis Group Advisory Committee that featured presentations on other current and upcoming Mars missions. Officials there said that a systems requirement review for Mars sample return has been pushed back to April. That review will address strategic questions about how the campaign will be run, including schedules and key technical elements. An independent review released in November of 2020 made several recommendations, such as delaying the launch of the sample retrieval lander and Earth return orbiter from 2026 to 2028, examining whether the lander should be split into two separate landers, and using a radioisotope thermoelectric generator rather than solar power for the lander or landers. NASA has not announced any decisions on those issues. Their announcement noted the sample retriever lander is scheduled for launch no earlier than 2026. However, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in a February 7th tweet responding to a question about Mars sample return prompted by the MAV contract announcement said, the tentative timeline is as early as 2028 for launching the lander and samples would come back in the early to mid 2030s. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but it seems that NASA's announcements are not very clear these days. After all, the only thing we can do is just wait and see. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And don't forget to tell us what you thought about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. And if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. As always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.